FeatureCam 2014 now supports the programming and simulation of tail stocks. In this particular example, we're leading on from the previous example where we added the steady rest to this process. If we look at this as a simulation on the machine tool, you can see here I've got my WFL machine. I'm going to step through each operation. So first we have the steady rest comes in and supports the end of the, the part. We then do some initial turning at the front. We then mill the slot. Move the steady rest back. And then we continue to turn the component. Once the steady rest is back in this position, we want to really support the front of this job because of the length of the part. To do this, we're going to bring in the tailstock. The tailstock is designed to support long parts by simply coming in and holding the part on centre. To generate the tailstock, it's exactly the same process as we use for the steady rest. So we go to turning, part handling, and we're going to select part support on, and in this case, the position. I'm going to position this at minus 50. This is because it's a hydraulic tailstock and we want to position just in front of the job before we extend the tailstock in to touch off at the front of the component. Let's choose next. From the pull down list I can choose what kind of support I want to do. In this case I'm going to select the tailstock. And also note that the turret control, in this case we're using the upper turret because this is a single turret machine. But we could also, if we wish, under the turret control, if we had a second turret, we could add a tailstock on a turret position. In which case you need to make sure that the indexing location is the same position as where your tailstock is located on the lower turret. Once I'm happy with my choices, I can choose Finish and say OK. I now have a part support on operation, which I can move up the tree. In this case I'm going to position it just above the example one where we have the tail stock and note the number is going to indicate the priority position. So I'm going to enter 4 as my priority as I want this to be the fourth operation that happens. We can now play through the simulation to see what we've got so far. So again, steady rest will come in and support. We turn the front mill the front. Now the tailstock comes in and positions. We can release the steady rest, move its location and continue to turn the job. We now need to move the tailstock because it's no longer required for the rest of our machining process. It's worth noting that if I don't move it, it is fully collision checked in our simulation. So let's go ahead and send it to its home position. Exactly the same process in terms of a turning operation, select part handling. This time I'm going to choose part support off and then from the pull down list I'm going to select tail stock to send it home. I can say finish move its location to just after when we bring the steady rest into position and again note the example is number 8 so we can go ahead and change the priority to be 8. That will now remove the tail stock ready for the rest of the operations. So once again let's watch the simulation. Steady rest comes into position. We turn the front of the part do our small amount of milling, bring the tailstock into position. Now we can move the steady rest, turn the front of the part, move the steady rest again. Now we can send the tailstock home. And in this case we've got a facing operation just at the front of the part to clear any marks that may have been left by the locating position of the tailstock. We can now play the rest of the operations to finish our component.